here we are still on the Mount of Olives in Jerusalem. We're on actually the southern flank of the Mount of Olives, looking south in one direction, if you uh, just kind of get the panorama. Uh, to set up the orientation, look over to your left uh, into the eastern sun, uh, and you see the Judean desert already beginning this close to Jerusalem. And beyond that, a little bit more to the south or to the right, you see the Dead Sea. Uh, not very well, there's kind of hazy, but that's how close Jerusalem is to the desert and the Dead Sea. And then as you pan on to your right from the Dead Sea and from the desert, uh, you see just a lot of the neighborhoods that now make up Jerusalem, a city of about 800,000. Uh, you see, uh, again, so part of the cemetery on the southern slope, so the Mount of Olives below us here. But what I want to especially point out to you is if you look straight south, you'll see in the far distance, it may be a little bit hard to see, uh, kind of a volcano-shaped mountain. And that's the mountain of Herodian. Not a huge mountain, uh, but that mountain was not always there. In fact, there used to be two hills about half as tall as that mountain. And during the time of Herod the Great, he wanted to make a fortress as uh, a place to run for protection in case he were attacked or in case somebody were, were seeking his life. And so he made a series of palace fortresses where he could live and be safe and Herodian is one of those and it's probably one of the greatest achievements that he did in terms of engineering and architecture because what he decided to do was to hollow out the hill on the right and he built his palace and all the tunnels and the cisterns and everything in the hill on the right and then he basically took the hill on the left and over a period of 12 years with 20,000 slaves he had the slaves move the hill on the left, the mountain on the left, and put it on top of the mountain on the right and basically cover up uh, his palace fortress so that he would be entirely safe. And so when everybody saw that going on for 12 years, they said, Herod is great. Herod can move mountains. <laughs> uh, and so they, they watched that going on. And it worked. Uh, there's still a large part of that fortress here today. Uh, and you can go visit that and, and be amazed at what Herod did. Also on the northern side of that hill, of that, that fortress, uh, Herod's tomb was found about 10 years ago in 2007. But we have a, a different story that connects with this place as well. In Mark chapter 11, during the last week of Jesus' life, uh, Jesus is coming every day from Bethany over the Mount of Olives, probably walking with similar to this view, obviously without all the buildings and houses, and going on to the temple and teaching and doing the events that we see in the last part of the Gospels. And on one of those occasions, uh, Jesus wanted a fig to eat, and he found a fig tree probably on top of this mountain. And there were no figs, and so he cursed the tree. Then he went on and he, he uh, cleansed the temple, and he came back the next day and the fig tree was withered. And Peter and the apostles were amazed at the power of Jesus' words just speaking to the tree and, and the results that that had. And Jesus says to them, if you have faith, the size of a mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, uh, be cast into the sea. Uh, again, a way that, that he had of, of pointing out the importance of just a small amount of faith in the true God. And yet you wonder if Jesus said those words right here where we are, looking toward Herodian, and perhaps as a visual reminder, say, well, Herod the Great took 12 years and 20,000 slaves to move that, maybe you know, 50 meters, what would it be like if you could say to that mountain, with no slaves, instantly uh, be thrown into the sea? And maybe Jesus pointed at that mountain and then pointed over at the Dead Sea to make his point visually. I think it's a real possibility, again, just underlining uh, the power of faith in Jesus.